Repo, 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 repos galore. I made a video a year ago about how repossessions are starting to increase, go on the climb, be whatever, but they are even worse this year. A year later, they're just going up and up, and today we're gonna go buy a repo at an auction and see what repo we're gonna end up with. Are they worth it? Like, can I get a discount on them? We should, but the problem with repossessions are you don't know what you're getting. Why was that car repossessed? Maybe it needs a transmission, maybe it needs an engine, maybe the person just couldn't afford the car. There could be a million reasons why. Today I'm at the auction looking at repossessed vehicles. You're gonna come with me. My name's Craig from Flying Wheels. So let's get going. One year ago, almost to the day, I made a video about how repossessions, repossessed vehicles are going to be on the rise. Fast forward one year later, repo apocalypse as the internet and YouTube is saying. I hate to be all doom and gloom and I don't want this video to be about that today. I'm gonna take you to a dealer auction because there is just an absorbent, that's the right word, amount of repossessed vehicles at the auction. Are they worth it? Are there deals to be made when buying repossessed vehicles? There's a lot of headaches that come along with these cars. Why were they neglected? Why do people stop paying them? What are the prices we're gonna pay for them? Are there deals? We're gonna find that all out. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. You all know Papa Al. Papa Al. Let's go search around the auction a little bit. Pop, I got a question for you. So interest rates are on the rise, right? Yep. When interest rates go up, people's payments go up. So like if the interest rates were at 3% a year ago or a year and a half ago, you could buy a car for more money because your payments would be lower. Same with a mortgage. Now with good credit, 800 credit scores, I'm seeing 9% interest rates, 10% interest rates, which is wild to me and to a lot of people watching. You went through Reaganomics, you went through everything before that. What were interest rates in the 70s? Eight. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Nine. So it is normal to see an 8% interest rate. When I got my first mortgage on a house, it was five and three quarter percent. And that was low at the point like 15 years ago. I think a lot of people have just adjusted to 3% interest rates and they're thinking that like, we can pay a million dollars on a house because interest rates are so low. That's not normal at all. No. What was the mortgage on your first house? First, Not the price, the interest rate. Interest on the first house was 6%. 6%, that's pretty good. And I think my parents' interest was like up around 12 or 13% in the 80s when they yeah. bought their first house. Now, the, the house I'm on with that was 11%. 11%. So we're probably not even at the top of interest rates hiking. So here's what's happening. I don't have a crystal ball, but because I'm in the industry, I kind of see what's happening ahead of time, like before you do. I saw interest rates were going up a year ago. Yeah. That's to slow spending. Well, when you slow spending, people are gonna stop buying because they're not spending. So in 2020, 2021, 2022, when car prices were at a high, the highest they've ever been in history because there was a shortage, people were overpaying for those cars. Then interest rates started increasing, so less people started buying cars, less demand, more supply because cars are being built again there's no shortage of vehicles so now there's more supply than there is demand a lot of people overpaid for their cars for the past two years so for example that 2015 nissan rogue might have been twenty five thousand dollars two years ago fast forward two years later it's two years older and now it's worth twelve thousand dollars but the buyer still owes 17 so they go to trade it in and they have five thousand dollars of negative equity they owe an additional five thousand dollars on top of what it's worth that is Everybody that's bought a car in the past three years, that's what's happened. What are your choices? You pay off that $5,000 of negative equity or you just give it back. Now, there's even worse to repossessions and I'm gonna show you this one right here. Check out this Ford Flex. When I open the doors, it's gonna be disgusting. All right, this is clean. I looked at this last week and it was in even worse condition. Now, a lot of times, people with really terrible or low credit will get a loan on a car, like really high monthly payments, and then they just can't afford to make maintain the vehicle. So it'll need brakes and they'll neglect that. It'll need oil changes and they'll neglect that. And then something will go wrong and they just can't afford to make the repairs. So why make payments on a car you can't afford to make repairs on? So they just let it go. They give it back to the bank. So if you owe too much money on it and you don't have the like the difference in what you owe and what it's worth, you just say, oh, forget it, never mind. I'll voluntarily give it back to the bank. But the bank doesn't want it. And you're still on the hook for the negative equity that you, the difference that you own. So if they go sell this car, Car and you owe 12 and they get eight, you still owe them four grand. It's gonna go on your credit for that difference. The other thing is you can't afford to make the repairs, so 
you start making the payments, so you're like, ah, forget it. Just let the bank take it. You have no idea how many calls I get for people trying to get approved for a loan. And when I do, like I ask them, I kind of like buffer them, okay, ask them questions, pre-qualify them. Do you have any bank repossessions, any foreclosures? Oh, no, no. And they always say no. And then I do the loan, which I'm going to find out anyway. I do the loan and a car was repossessed like five days ago. So when I ask, hey, it says your car was repossessed five days ago. Oh, I didn't think it would show up yet. So they can't afford the car they get back and now they want to get financed on a new one and they start off the relationship lying to me. It's extremely frustrating, but the moral of the story is we're getting an influx of repossessed vehicles. They are everywhere from ugly to bad to good. They're all over the place. Sometimes you get hit like this, you can barely afford your insurance. So you just say, forget it, whatever, Westlake, Take it back. I don't even want it anymore. Now, Westlake, the bank, has to buy this back and you owed a ton of money on it and you crashed it and never paid your insurance bill. And Westlake is stuck, so the bank is stuck. That's not the bank's fault that, like, the dealer that oversold it to you, it's their fault and the buyer for overpaying on a car. But now the bank is stuck with this car and they're gonna run it through the auction because they're not sellers, they're not dealers. They're gonna run it through the auction for someone else to buy and I'm gonna pay a thousand bucks maybe on a car that somebody probably owed 10 on. We're at the auction, let's go see what's here now. So here's an ugly one and oftentimes in the repo lane you do get the ugly like look at how just terrible that is new england is awful which is why you might have seen me going to florida the past few videos i think i'm going to vegas soon to go hit some auctions to find some desert cars yeah. so hopefully that'll be a video coming up soon 17 focus 105,000 miles probably needs a transmission which is why it's here cac credit acceptance corp super super low subprime lender They're, they finance like the lowest of the low westlake financial is another one they finance kind of everybody but here we go we'll have like a 2012 dodge ram and if you look at these rocker panels are completely rotted so if you don't have the money to make the repairs on those rockers the car is uninspectable, meaning you can't drive it on the road legally in New Hampshire or Massachusetts or Vermont, Maine, anywhere in this area. So why make the payments on a car you can't drive? Give it back. Let it go to repo. 2016 Chevy Equinox. That's not bad. A 2018 Toyota Highlander. That's not bad. Ford Escapes. Good. I actually do really well with trucks. So this 14 Silverado and this 15 Silverado, I do really, really well with. This has pretty choppy tires, but I've just looked at it. The rust is pretty decent on it. Like there isn't a lot of it. It's an LTZ. So leather backup camera nav, 20 inch wheels, a 19 CRV or HRX or something. A 19 Subaru. So we're getting into better cars. These might be vehicles that somebody just overpaid for and then gave them back. Have you ever had a repossessed car? No. no, don't. It's terrible for your credit. If you can fight it, do everything in your power to not have a car repossessed. It will affect you forever. It will affect you for seven years at least. It'll affect you when you go buy a house, when you go get a credit card, when you go get another auto loan, even when you go get your telephone. Like if you go to Verizon, they check your credit. Don't mess with your credit. It's super, super important. And people judge you based on your credit before it. Ugly, ugly. Get a dent there on that Chrysler 300. That's a bummer. I do really well with Suburbans. You know, taillight's probably $60. They can get a little rusty, so you'll see the bubbling down here. But what's good about these Tahoes, they're built like a truck. They're built on a Chevy truck platform but they're used for families so they're usually not abused like trucks are which is why i like these and i have three kids and a dog so it just makes sense i buy what i know all right that's good for now i mean there's lots and lots of cars at the auction let's head in and we'll see what we end up with today i'm here to buy stuff might be repos might be trade-ins might be wholesale deals from dealer to dealer who knows that's kind of the fun part about the auction once i sell my audi e-tron gt i am in the market for a tesla but i know the seller of this one and i've been burned in the past and i'm not too eager to buy another car from them wow that is cool i've never driven a model s i would like to try it that is so neat i love how the door handles close wait for it wait for it well whatever i just touch it and it closes i just made a video about how i'll never buy an audi again it may or may not have been released yet but this is a 2014 audi s8 oh i'm assuming dead battery i am like so sick of audis but i love them this car 540 horsepower all-wheel drive in a luxury car it has a check engine light on and i didn't bring my scan tool with me this week so this is kind of a gamble i don't want to be part of yet i have never owned a mach e i did race across the country in an EV against a Mach-E and the Mach-E is the one that won. They had the best range. I want to buy one just to drive it and enjoy it and test it out and get my opinions on it and then sell it. How about an honorable mention of this 89 Bronco that is super clean. Yeah, that's 
sneak preview to this video, I did end up buying a repo and I absolutely stole it. Probably a $20,000 car. I just paid $11,540 for it. You have to wait to the end of the video to see what it is I bought. Wait a tick, not a repo, but check out this 72 Chevelle Heavy Chevy. Pretty sure that's a decal, right? There was no such thing as a 72 Chevelle Heavy Chevy. You can, well, it says it on the side too. You guys tell me, rally wheels, some bodywork there. In a factory four speed. It says it on the rear as well. I wonder if those are just decals. No, I know what about. All right, if you don't know, now you know, Papa Cal, that 72 Chevelle. Yeah. Is there such thing as a heavy Chevy or is that a decal? Yeah, it's a decal, but they used to call them heavy Chevys. They had, I don't know if they actually had a model that said heavy Chevy, but it was an old term they used to use. So. Yeah. Cool. You know, when I was in high school, we could buy those things for fifteen hundred bucks. Now I bet it's fifteen thousand. Yeah. You're gonna want and for it's it. It's kind of rough. Yeah, it's rough, rough. Yeah. My father and I were just chatting about that Chevelle. That is a rat. It's gonna ride like hell. It's gonna be hot as hell when you're driving it. And the problem is, they're gonna want fifteen grand for it. Like that's things are just overinflated for anything kind of remotely cool. And at like. 3,500, 4,500, five grand. Somebody that's on a budget that wants a toy like a cheap muscle car, that's great for that. I guarantee you they're gonna want 15 grand. That's gonna be the starting bid on that car. Hey, Paul, I missed it. What'd they start the bidding on? What? what? No, they're at 10 grand. They started the bidding at 10 grand? Yeah. Oh, all right. No bids at 10 grand. Look at this, the auction's almost over. Three lanes are empty with cars and the repo cars are still going all the way down the road. That's how many repossessions there are. It just keeps going. That's enough for the auction. I think I bought what I needed. I bought something we're gonna go check out. And I bought, I have an if on a Jeep Wrangler. If meaning like the highest bidder didn't meet the seller's reserve. We're gonna go check that one out too. There's not much else running through that I'm interested in. So we'll go out there and see what we bought. All right, before we get into what I purchased, I have an if on this Jeep Wrangler. This is a 2015 with 100 127,000 miles. I think it has a lifter tap. What's good about this 3.6 liter has the new body style does have the soft top We're in peak season for Jeeps right now. It does have a lifter tap That's pretty common on these but they're fairly easily replaceable Hear that tick 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 now I have an if on it meaning I am the high bidder It's a little scary that the dealer didn't even write their name on it Usually they'll write like who the seller is which I know a lot of the sellers here And if he's not gonna write his name on it, it's a little scary why does he not want to be known? Having an if on it means I have two hours to look at it and the seller has two hours to sell it to me. I have two hours to look at it and then after two hours I can say, no, I don't want it. I'm on the hook for two hours. Keyless remote, like power locks and lock, automatic transmission, which I find is an easier seller in Jeeps. We can check transmission first. <laughs> Go to the restroom? We have reverse. We have no lights on the dash, but a fuel light, that's good. I think we just have a lifter tap, which is common in these. Is it gonna shift? It shifts, is it gonna stop? I should probably check that before I get too close to that car in front of us. All right, can you go there? I'm gonna go for a rip. It seems like it's okay, it might be a winner. Yeah, no. I've replaced the lifters in these before, it's really not a big deal, and it's Jeep season, so. I think I will wait on this one. Instead of canceling it, I'll let them know that I, I want it. The troublesome thing is, like the hardest part is trying to figure out why this car is at the auction. So a dealer could be selling it for multiple reasons. This is not a bank repo. This is a dealer selling it here. I'm gonna make the assumption that it's here because it has a lifter tick. But every car that's here that you see right here that's not a bank repo is here because a used car dealer is selling it for for a reason and we have to gamble and fit, try and figure out why it's here. Same with repos. I have to figure out why the repo was repossessed. So we did end up getting one and I'll tell you I paid right around $12,000 for it and I can sell it for 20. A year ago, two years ago, three years ago, it would have been a $30,000 truck. Now it's a $20,000 truck. I buy them at significant discounts. So let's say I could sell it for 20 and I paid 12. That $8,000 isn't like $8,000 of profit. It's gonna need a lot of work. Repossessions always need a lot of work and they're always a gamble. So I could buy it, it needs a $5,000 transmission that I have to do and tires, you never know. So I get discounts on them, assuming the worst and hopefully I get lucky and it doesn't need an engine or a transmission and maybe the person just couldn't afford the payments and didn't neglect it. You never know and that's why I can get such discounts on repos because it is a complete gamble. Here is our win of the day. This is a 2015 Chevy Silverado LTZ. It's ugly, you can see there are scratches all down the side there's some rust
rust here. We're gonna have to grind down. The tires need to be replaced, but rocker panels and cab corners are in good shape. It is an LTZ with leather. It's filthy and it stinks. Ooh, a dime. And it has dog hair in it. It smells bad. And let's check this thing out. So yeah, it's just dirty. The tires are really choppy. I hate these all terrain BF Goodriches. Look at how choppy they are, low, high. Those are gonna be so loud on the road and it needs a general reconditioning, like a good solid buff and polish. Probably has a 5.3 liter. It would be awesome if it had a 6.2. I don't think that was an option in the LTZ, only the Highland, what's that? High Country. It doesn't say right there. It usually does say it right here. That looks like a 5.3 though. That's not a 6.2. Oh, it does say 5.3, 5.3 yeah. right there. Right there. All right, going down this side, we have some scratches, but what's nice, it's not rusty here. This paint chips off and they rust. The bumper chrome chips off and they rust. It's not on this one. Choppy tires, again, low, high. Some crust in there, but rocker panels are solid. Has a tonneau cover that we can fix. Ooh, some parts in there. That looks like weather all season floor mats. Somebody's trash. And again, leather, but we have weather text, which is why those carpets are in such good shape. It doesn't has the original books. One key, which is a bummer about repossessions. Keys are super, super expensive now. With a set of remotes, we're talking three to $500 for a set of keys. Repossessions, a lot of times like the repo company goes and gets these things with no keys. So they call a guy to come out, cut a key, and all you get is just a key, no remote. So this truck is equipped with remote starter. It's equipped with a lock, unlock, emergency, everything. And all I have is a single key. So I'm gonna have to buy a remote for it. Oh, and the it. battery's dead. The guy even asked if I have my jump pack. I didn't bring it. The battery's dead. They're almost all always dead because repossessions sit for a long time. So they're waiting for the bank to get the title. They're waiting for the car to get repo. They've probably been sitting for a while anyway. Then they come to the auction, they sit waiting on a title. People leave lights on, people leave windows open or whatever. So these cars sit for a really long time and more often than not, the batteries are dead yeah. in these. Now we gotta jump it. And there we go, she's a runner. Actually, didn't even need a jump, just had a loose negative terminal. Whoop. All right, straight now. Yep. Just a touch. You almost be touching the front. Oh, okay. Come on. Whoa. Well, the inch and a half from the, the grill. Looks like it's shut off. Thank you. It's all strapped up. I went underneath to put the strap on. Whatever. The trash water is leaking. It leaked onto my head and my arm, and it smells like a garbage dump. I smell like a garbage dump. All right, see this fence with the barbed wire and the security lights? These auctions have very, very limited access, meaning if you don't have a dealer's license, you can't get into these auctions. They're really restricted, and the bank won't give the public time of day to like sell them one car at a time. They want to wholesale them all out in bulk. In order to do that, you need a dealer's license. How do you get a dealer's license there's like so many hoops to jump through like you can google how to get a dealer's license it's not really that helpful if you really want to learn how to start your own dealership like small or big scale it to as big as you want i started a program called startyourdealership.com www.startyourdealership.com there's a link down below if you want to learn how to like actually get your license to buy cars the way i do at wholesale prices way below the public and get them for and i can teach you how to do it too not just to get your license and get access so if you're interested there is a link down below for www.startyourdealership.com all right, next video, we're gonna get this thing home. I'm actually gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do is bring this to the tire shop to get tires for it. Then I'm gonna bring it to my shop, get it reconned, detailed, state inspected. That's gonna be a whole other video. Like we're gonna bring this thing back to life. I'm gonna show you how we do it. You can't get access to these auctions. Like the bank won't give you the time of day unless you have a dealer's license. In order to get a dealer's license, it's a lot of hoops to jump through. If you wanna learn how to do that, www.startyourdealership.com. There's a link down below. If you like this video, there's also a thumbs up button. That's really, really helpful for me. So please hit that thumbs up. I'll see y'all later. Adios. Oh,